My name is Christoph. I am uh, living in Germany and I'm working as a full stack uh, software developer in my day job and in my uh, in Java and Kotlin and at a local company here in Paderborn, Germany. And in my spare time, I'm working at the open source bibliographic manager Jabrov, which is proudly using Java X. Jabrov is an uh, open source bibliographic management uh, software. So uh, it's mostly used in the university or research context. Um, imagine your research, you have to organize your references, your papers, uh, and so on. It helps. Jabrov is a tool which helps you with this task. Uh, it helps you to collect the information by searching the web for you, downloading papers, organizing in groups, and uh, also doing searching through the PDFs and, and a couple of more features. Yeah. Um, Maybe we can dive into the application and see how it works. This is uh, the application Jetfrag, where you have your all the entries, basically each, each entry uh, is a reference. And we have all the different fields and uh, data and groups we can use to organize uh, our information, our papers. And we always have the option to use the plain, the plain BibTeX uh, for the entry. I can modify it directly, and it will be updated immediately in the other fields as well. And uh, of course, we have a search here, the web search, a search library organizing. Yeah. And the search, is this only within your own project or can you also search documentation online? You can uh, use this one here online. For example, we can search, uh, we have so-called fetchers, so we can uh, search different publication, uh, publishing portals like uh, Arxiv or Crossref uh, and import from various uh, data sources. So I will do a search now for Arxiv. Searching for some new papers we want to uh, to import, and then I will see here. I can have a, my web search, and I can add it to my links and import. I can also see the abstract directly, and can then select the entries I want to import. So the search function, uh, you're calling all these different libraries. Um, yes. Does that mean that you had to write? A web call specific for each of them, or are they following a standard? Some have an API we can use. Some others are more or less uh, some parsing of some HTML codes, um, some some bit crawling. I guess that's a big have, part of the development yeah. is is how yeah, you interact with all these. It's a challenge to keep up to date with uh, with changing websites. Um, but for the user, it's more or less transparent because the search syntax um, is, is common across Jabrev. Um, so you actually make you, an abstraction? You know, yeah, so you can write, you can combine like with AND and it does work uh, automatically. For example, one uh, fetcher requires to use an, the ampersand sign to combine terms and the other one is using AND in uppercase, the other one in lowercase or some as a combination, and we uh, we see that I now imported this uh, this entry, and I also have the PDF here. When I click here, it downloaded the yeah. So we have directly, if available, the full text will be downloaded, and uh, we can also annotate the PDF and and see annotations and and more. And also um, a useful feature is uh, is to explore uh, citation relations. Um, like who's, uh, wh which paper cites, wh yeah, what are the author citing and who is citing this exactly paper mm -hmm. and, so on. and uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, things you can do with Jeffrey and uh, it's a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, and for, it's a lot of complexity hidden for power users, <laughs> many users, yeah, <laughs> both. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the challenges we have. This is an open source project, uh, you yes. said. Um, that means all the sources are on GitHub. Is there a big team behind this? Yeah, we are a core team of like a couple of a handful of developers, um, maintainer, and we have a lot. But we have a lot of external contributors. And just this year, we participated in Google Summer of Code again with three projects. Um, we got three students working on some project, but we also have regular 
regular collaborations with students from university. Mm -hmm. It's part of our um, mission to also use Jabrov in software engineering courses. Um, and we have contacts with universities from all over the world and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, yeah, and a lot of drive-by contributors. If we look at the code, are there any specific uh, problems that could easily be fixed with Java VIX or Java that you think would have been difficult with another framework? I think generally we like the idea of having these Java VX um, observables. That's, we are a huge fan of these observables and we have uh, the binding to the UI, the data binding stuff. Uh, I can also demonstrate this. Uh, is this is the option if you have downloaded some uh, files already. Uh, maybe you were on a different computer and uh, downloaded already a couple of um, my folder here right now. Where is it? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then you can um, import these or uh, these existing files, and Drupal will try to link them to existing entries. So uh, and this is one of the things I like about JavaFX because we can do these cool animations and we will also see that in the background uh, we will see these icons coming here. This means that uh, in the background uh, it will be added to the entry and uh, directly visible in the UI. And so I think this is one of the cool cool things you can do with uh, JavaFX. Uh, yeah. So you're using bindings for, the, for those? Yeah, we are using a lot of bindings and... Um, we can also see the, the icons, the styling of the table. This is also another thing we, we really like. Um, I, I personally like, for example, you can, uh, I'm not sure if it's from Control Suffix or it did it ourselves, but we can uh, yeah, have this cool UI stuff. And for example, for the groups, and for example, select an icon. So we can use Java. And now we'll have uh, we will have the icons, Java icon as mm -hmm. well, and that's one of the cool things we can do with JavaFX. And it's uh, and so that it's used beyond the desktop, and no web browser or anything is required. Mm -hmm. But also the uh, but speaking of web browsers, um, we also this is a web view component where we render the generated citation styles as uh, HTML and display them. And this mm -hmm. is also a very cool integration from JavaFX. So you package this app uh, for desktop? Yes. Uh, how is this done? Is this something automated? You have some build pipelines there in place? Uh, yes, we heavily rely on GitHub uh, Actions, and we use uh, JLink and JPackage together to create a modularized application and to distribute it as an installer for all platforms for like Mac. Uh, for Mac, we have the DMG and the PKG and for, for Linux we have the DAP files and so on and uh, yeah distributed for all platforms and also we have also a port table and we also build Snap uh, Snapcraft for Ubuntu uh, but that's basically most of the Linux um, packaging is based on the port table we built for Linux so mm -hmm. that it's just repackaged in another format but that's also a great flexibility that we don't have to worry about Java dependencies anymore. And ooh, which JDK is installed on the computer? And oh, it doesn't work with JDK 8. And you need 11 for this application. And mm -hmm. you now ship all relevant stuff. Um, and the user oh, can right. just run it. And all these GitHub actions are also available in uh, yes, the social? Yes, all available on our uh, all workflows. Are also public. Since a while, we already use the uh, workflows also for the pre-release versions of JavaFX so that we can test some uh, because some users have some users when some users report problems we can try if uh, we can try out if they are fixed uh, in newer JavaFX versions for example we had a couple of issues with Linux users in different desktop environments and um, some of them unfortunately were already solved by newer uh, JavaFX versions so we could uh, just points into the pre-release build to be with a newer JavaFX version mm -hmm. we have. I think you're also w w always one of the first to bump your application to the latest yeah, Java actually, version. Yeah, actually, just this morning we updated to JavaFX uh, 23 already. I can demonstrate it that I'm... Yes, we are recording this on the date of uh, the release of Java 23. So yes. you're already using it? 
Yes, we are already just migrated. Uh, you can see it uh, for JavaFX. Uh, we use JavaFX 23, but still the JDK 21. Mm -hmm. You can use a newer Java VIX version with an older yeah. Java runtime. That's, that's yeah. another really great aspect that it's no longer coupled um, as it was in the past. And this mm -hmm. is what we also like about the flexibility of uh, Java VIX. You said some issues uh, got solved with, with just bumping to a newer Java VIX version. Yes. Uh, are there still a lot of issues, instabilities? Stability and performance wise, it's Actually, JavaFX has uh, come a long way, and it's very uh, good now. But it's more like we had uh, we had behavior on some Linux desktop environments. Something where the menus menus are off. As there was something uh, some with the IA three window manager mm -hmm. or something. Uh, but more like uh, edge cases, which are related to some yeah certain Linux desktop environment co combinations. You keep up to date with the Java and Java VIX uh, releases, but what are the functionality that you still want to add to JapRef? Oh, there's uh, always a lot of uh, <laughs> functionality wished by uh, there are wishes by the users, and of course, uh, uh, wishes by us developers. Uh, our current focus was uh, is on the modular further modularization of JapRef. This means uh, we want to split up um, the UI and the CLI components and. Uh, some some server code um, for data integration with external third parties, so that you can use JavaFS library as well. For example, we have a quality uh, like cleaning up entries or integrity checks here. For example, some some warnings about uh, the usage of certain characters or certain quality issues that came came up through our automatic checks if you for example if you want to use it in LaTeX you have to use some special escaping sometimes and uh, this this is part of the tool chain where we want to position your mm -hmm. so you have a CI tool you have the UI tool uh, you mentioned yeah. something about the server side uh, yes we have uh, some integrated and in, already integrated an HTTP server but it's not yet used anywhere it's uh, the preparation for our collaboration with external services. For example, we want to connect to, offer the possibility to provide like a kind of an API to connect mm -hmm. to other online services. Is there some uh, specific functionality that you're proud of that you definitely want to show? Something that you uh, were able to solve an issue maybe? Yes, uh, basically it's this dialogue and as you can see it's an accordion and uh, the real difficulty was to uh, move the arrow to the right. Uh, basically in standard drive of X it's on the left. Um, but yeah, actually it was a bit it, it was a bit tricky and um, we resolved it by uh, using a custom uh, a custom skin uh, and could use it in Java X uh, CSS then. Um, this is pretty critical for a lot of companies if they build an application they really want that kind of layout that's something they style that it fits into their company identity yeah. is, is that easy to achieve with java fix uh, yes i think so we have already uh, can also share it we have um, a theming uh, we have theming offers in in JavaRef. you can use a, already you can use a custom theme uh, or I can easily switch between uh, dark, dark mode. And we have users that are already adapting um, their themes to, for example, to increase the spacing um, for better visibility in the table. They uh, want to have a better, better, more spacing or any other. I think that's a cool thing that you can do uh, with the flexibility of the CSS. You can do a lot of uh, styling and uh, theming. And everyone can adjust it like yeah. they, they want to have a layout. Yeah, I, I personally prefer light themes, <laughs> but uh, many users prefer dark themes. So I, I'm uh, also on the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more on the light side. So, uh, but uh, colleagues, a lot of colleagues prefer dark themes. So yeah, yeah. And indeed, there are different libraries also for Java VIX who, who make this easier. And that you can yeah. easily uh, add these, these different teams. Uh, I'm really interested to dive into your workflows and see how you how you built all this. Um, and uh, so, because yeah, G package is really a nice tool, but uh, I didn't use it myself enough to really know what's so possible. Yeah, it's uh, it takes some time to uh, now, and we had a couple of 
troubled issues with uh, with the modernization and jailing uh, jail package together, but um, so far we were able to solve them, uh, even by uh, fixing stuff fixing stuff in the JDK itself. So uh, thanks for contributing back so that everyone can take benefit of this. Yeah. Exactly. This was a, this was really a blocking. Uh, at one point, we had so many external dependencies that we could no longer build uh, binaries uh, through JLink because it would hit the uh, um, uh, so method to large limit of Java with 64 kilobytes uh, because how internally JLink mm -hmm. manages all the module stuff, and it was yeah basically it turned out it was JLink was just adding all module info to one method, and this method became too large when we had so many external dependencies. Yeah, but my, but we at uh, we were able to to uh, create a pull request, and uh, it took us some time to dive into the bytecode generation mm -hmm. of, of the JDK, but yeah, finally we were able to, to solve it and fix it for others, and uh, that's, yes. that's what we believe in, that we are giving back our fixes. Yeah. <laughs> but really nice that that if you find an issue which really goes back into the JDK, that you're able yes. to find it and and proposal propose a fix, and it's now included uh, in the in the official builds. Yeah, we try to at least uh, report the issues, and even if possible, and if we have the time mm. to really mm. uh, manage to fix them as well, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and, and showing uh, the demo uh, and that we can make people aware of what can be built with JavaFX. Yeah, thank you for inviting uh, me and Jotref to the series and uh, we are looking forward to hearing more of the JavaFX in action series.